with you what we did during the week. Thank you also for sharing your prayer requests. Some of you emailed me or texted me or just spoke to me so we could create a prayer of the people. And some of you added your prayers to the sheets in the back of the room when you came in. So thank you for doing that. We always begin singing and praying to center our hearts and minds and then we enter into the word and to the message time. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, we are so glad for your presence with us here this morning through the Holy Spirit. We know that you are always with us, and yet somehow when we come here, we feel closer to you. Our hearts are focused and our minds are focused. So thank you for this time and this space that you give to us so that we can be built up as people who believe in you and who love you, so that you can perfect us and refine us, so that we do a better job of showing the world your love with our own hands and our own feet. God, we ask that uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit that each person here would be touched specifically and that we would be given exactly what we need so that when we leave this place, we go out stronger and better because of the time that we have spent. God, we have concerns in our community and we lift them to 
to you this morning. We're so grateful that Ray LaMonica can be here today, and we ask that you'd be with Sarah in this season of life, that you would help her strength and spirits. We ask that you would be with those who struggle uh, with addiction and help them to stay the course, help them to be strong today and feel relief. We ask the same prayer for those with depression and ask that you administer to their hearts and minds. Continue to be with uh, the niece of Mary Grimmer, uh, who operates the preschool here, whose cancer is spread to her brain God. We ask that the experimental treatment she's um, undergoing might help prolong her life. And we continue in prayer for a four-year-old named Andrew, uh, now after surgery. Um, we've been praying for him for weeks. God, we ask for strength for him and for his parents. And also, also for Kimberly, who has multiple illnesses. God, there's many joys among us this morning. We celebrate the return of the uh, main missions team uh, safely with no injuries and the work that the team has done. We thank you for the houses and the people who live in them uh, up in Maine and ask that they would continue to be blessed because of the work this team did. We also celebrate the work of the International Family Church, which brought a painting crew here to Aldersgate yesterday and ask that they be blessed for what they've done for us. And also for three painters here at the church, Lord, so much painting going on this week. Uh, we just thank you for a physical expression of your work in the world, even through new paint. We celebrate along with a wise family that Joey Wise was accepted to medical school at Temple University of Philadelphia just this week. Uh, we celebrate the, your grace, God, when we really need a second chance and you come through for us. We pray also for the possibilities and potential of the kids' camp, Vacation Bible School, coming up in about a month here in August, and ask that you would go before us as we seek to reach those who are not connected to churches. We thank you for an opportunity this Tuesday night to extend invitations to friends to come here for a barbecue, for a casual uh, time together and prayer and song uh, to remember you and to love you just during the week when the weekends are so busy in the summer. And finally today we thank you for Daniel Schinnebarger's opportunity to travel with a youth group to the Philippines. We ask that you would be with him even right now across on the other side of the world and help him to do effective ministry with that group. We ask that you would bring him back here safely in due time. God, you've heard all of these prayers. Now we ask that you would hear the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Normally at this time, we would have the children come forward, but because it is the main mission team report, I thought the kids might like to stay in church today to be able to see the slideshow and hear the reports. So we will have that be. The whole thing is a children's moment today. So let's move on to our psalm. Each week we read a psalm together. Make sure we're getting up and into our Bibles. Let's read Psalm 24 together. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas, and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, He is the King of glory. Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. And I'm just going to read it right from there because I didn't find it in my Bible yet. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to, to form one body. 
whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now each of you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. I chose this scripture just for a brief moment of reflection before we hear from four different members of the main mission team. I think we're hearing from four. Is Steve right out here? He had hope to come. Well, we'll hear from three then. Unless someone is so moved, be thinking someone from the team, um, if somebody would like to speak in addition. Uh, but just for a brief reflection, one of the things I love about our main mission trip, this is the 14th year that we've gone up there, and every year that we've gone, we brought a group that has a very diverse um, age range. Uh, from the first time we went, when Wesley was almost two years old, that's how I count, by the way. How many parents are like that, where you're like, how long ago was it? My kid was five, um, right? Uh, Wesley was almost two years old. Uh, that year it was me and Wesley and Sam and Bob Kingsley and four Spicers. They weren't even Spicer, they were sets, yeah, four Spicers. From that first year until this year, when the youngest on the trip was Eva at age seven and the oldest, Joni, at 85 and a half years old. And what I think is really, <laughs> she was big on that half. She was like, I'll be 86 in November. Like, she's counting ahead already. You better be proud of it. But what I love about that is that when you think about sending a work team, or especially a construction team, up to help repair houses, you would say, well, the only people who should be going then are the people who are really strong, who know how to hang doors, or do roofing, or expert, you know, deck, uh, deck installers, or whatever. But in truth, that is a false representation of the needs of the team, and it doesn't take advantage of all the gifts that we have within the church. When we send the team, we have people who are pretty highly skilled and know how to boss construction sites, and we have to have that. Uh, we have people who are pretty new to it, who can take instruction and are just willing to work. We also have people who are there as encouragement and just to help build out the fellowship of the team. We have people who provide the cooking support. And so there really is a role for everybody. And that's what's at the heart of this scripture lesson. Um, when Paul was teaching the church that the church is like a body. He goes on to say things like, hey, and this, this could be a children's moment, if your whole body were just an ear, how would you see? And if your whole body were just a nose, how would you taste? Right? We need all different parts of our body to make up the whole body of Christ. And we needed all parts of our mission team to make up the whole ministry that we did in this past week. So I want to encourage you, if you're feeling, well, oh, oh, and one more thing. How about the whole of the church that was able to send us to Maine and the whole of the community? We did fundraising, raised over $3,000 uh, to be able to pay for the materials that we used on the Maine mission trip. And many of those gifts, I would have to look, but at least half of those gifts came from outside this church community. So the people outside the walls sent us on the trip. And the people who were here inside the walls donated. And there were people here inside the walls who prayed for us. And there were people here inside the walls who oversaw all the work that went on in the building this week, which was necessary, right, if that work was going to get done. So all of us work together. Each one of us has a role. So I don't want you to ever, ever feel like when you walk into this church or any church for that matter, that you don't have something to give. You absolutely do. Whether it's Eva who brings us joy and delight because she's bouncing around the dining hall with her curls and, you know, fighting with her siblings and brings a smile to our face, right? Or if it's Joni who's out there painting and would not take a half day of work when it was offered to her or in the kitchen. Or if it's Kevin who's busy trying to hang that door. Whatever it is, we've all got a part to play. We've all got a role. So never doubt the gift that God has given you. If God has given you something to use in the life of the church, you are part of the body. You are part of the eyes or the nose or the mouth or the head and the hands or the feet. You have got a role and you can do great things as the body of Christ together with all of us. So we'll be hearing from three different members of the team this morning. I wanted to hear, oh, I think we got a fourth, because Matthew said we would. I wanted to hear from some new folks who went for the first time this year. Out of 24 of us, we had uh, six people be new. Okay, good, thank you. And um, then I wanted to hear from veterans on the team as well. So why don't we have the four, uh, Max, Ash, and Danielle, and Bonnie on up here. Bonnie has been since the beginning, probably almost every time we've been. Uh, very veteran. Let's get you a microphone. We would love to hear what stood out to you during the week. What was special or valuable for you? 
Okay, so we're going to have to rotate through. Everyone's going to have to come over to where I am because this is as far as the microphone goes, okay? Um, all right, this is, I don't know, our 11th or 12th trip uh, for the Spicer Morissette family. And actually, I was prepared to talk about the particular family that we had um, helped. I didn't get there until Wednesday morning, so I think that's something you should know too, is that if you can't get the whole week for whatever reason, you can show up partway through. And believe me, they'll find work for you. It's not a problem. Um, we, something that really uh, struck us as one of our lessons of the week is that while we're there giving of ourselves and our time and our vacation time, these people are putting themselves in a really vulnerable spot because at one point there were 20 people on this person's um, house site. His name is Scott, his wife is Debbie. They're in their mid-50s and they have been dealt some really tough health problems on both sides. He's had several, um, heart, I think he had three heart attacks and he's had heart surgery. Um, she's a type one diabetic, she's gone through the insulin pump, she's gone through the whole thing. And then to top it off, one of their children has brain cancer and she is traveling three days a week to Bangor to take her into um, chemo, which is going down by the way. It has shrunk after four treatments and she's got eight to go. Um, so they were very appreciative. It's a family who has done things themselves. They take care of um, his older brother who lives next door with Parkinson's disease. They have nursed family members. They have taken care of grandchildren. Um, through some really tragic circumstances, they've ended up with extra kids to raise. And they've done all of this. And they're not the kind of people who would be out there saying, oh, you know, just give me a hand up. They were, they're really, really appreciative. They're the kind of people who've always been helping others, and now they really needed it. And they were just so appreciative. What we did, was paint, scrape, repair soffits. Um, there's maybe someone else will talk a little bit more about the mechanics that we did, but um, as we said, there was skilled and unskilled labor, and at one point there were 20 of us, ranging in age from 12 to 86 there, um, all working, working like crazy, um, laughing more than anything else, and um, really getting to know these very wonderful people. Hey, Bonnie, when we see the slideshow, their last name is Davis, right? Yes, yes, they're Davis on Davis Road. Right, so we'll, um, we'll see the pictures from that work site in the slideshow. Thanks. Yes. Just to give you an idea, I think we had six or eight gallons of paint used on, that was just the main house. That's not the trim and the primer and just the coating. Um, was eight gallons of paint. That is a lot of paint. And at one point, just one little, um, Sam said, where are those teenagers? I have a feeling there are cell phones involved. And we went looking, and the teenagers that he was talking about were in three different locations, each one of them with paintbrushes and scrapers and working their tails off. And it was really nice to see. Sam, you were wrong. Oh it was God. really good. <laughs> it was, and I'd like to add they were smiling while they were painting and scraping and really thrilled. One of them overheard Sam and it was kind of fun to prove them wrong. <laughs> All right, so um, we split into two groups. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, <laughs> I'm Ashton. And um, basically, we split into two groups to take on the first day we took on two different projects. Uh, one group painted, well, scraped for almost a whole day, and scraped all the edging and window frames of the house, and repaint, uh, primed them, repainted them. And the other group, they built a wheelchair. Wheelchair ramp, is that correct? They That's repaired the porch. They repaired the porch. Ah. And um, <coughs> they got that done in a day, so they went on to another project the next day. and. After we, well, while we were working, we got to meet the people that we were helping, and they were just so grateful and happy to see what we were doing. And just to see that felt amazing, and it almost put me at peace, like just at a state of peace. So it's great to see their reactions. 
I think the lady in your house also made you a homemade whoopie pie to say thank oh, you. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm Max, and it was really fun working with everybody on the trip, and it was also really fun scraping and painting. Even though I really don't enjoy scraping, I don't. Like <laughs> But yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of fun to work with everyone. We had a lot of good moments and fun times there, and it was great to see uh, how happy the people were that we were helping them. And yeah, that's it. Hi, I'm Danielle, and I'm uh, the first timer in this group, and I came along on this mission with my three children, uh, my 14-year-old and my 12-year-old twins, and I was very nervous at first, not having done this or done it with them before, as to what I was going to expect, but I was so pleased with this group that it was amazing to see how compassionate and kind everybody was to see different people working together, the leadership that was given um, on multiple projects, the painting, it was nice seeing uh, some of the little ones put to work with paintbrushes, that was a good thing, <laughs> over and over and over again because the paint just seemed to suck right through those uh, shingles. But uh, so it was really a good time and it was great to see the work that needed to be done back at the camp as well. There were also um, people and children that were willing to clean up after um, breakfast or dinner and help prepare meals and cooking for 24 people was something I definitely learned. <laughs> but um, overall, and then, I mean, just being able to see on the sites the different jobs, the different projects. We had the painters, the construction workers that were just making amazing things out of nothing. And, uh, Good description. and uh, we had the leadership in charge of everything, making sure things were where they were supposed to be. We had people back at camp, making sure everything was all taken care of and everybody was where they needed to be. Um, but there was also fun times on this trip too. So, you know, sparklers at night and s'mores. And so the group got to really bond and have some great fellowship. And it was really a pleasure to be a part of that. Thank you. All right, let's give them a hand. Thank you for giving us a hand. So we have the slideshow assembled of pictures that folks sent to me and Sam just to give you some visuals to what you just heard. And then after that, the mission team has some special music to present.
and let's sing the new song, Mission Team. We'll sing it for the whole church. Yes. Yes. And the support of the praise band, which is really nice to have. I think that the words might be easiest to read off the wall, even though they're also on the monitor right there. Do we have a place at the table words? Yeah. Okay. The words are on the monitor. The words are behind us. We're going to sing the verse, and we'll sing the chorus twice, and you will be amazed at how awesome it sounds. And join in if you want on the chorus. Joni said that she just thought of a quote that she had heard from Van Gogh um, that said, there is nothing more truly artistic than loving people. So that was her piece of sharing. I'd like 
to uh, invite the Downs family forward. Uh, we are delighted for the Downs family that they have made an important change in their lives needed at this season. And very, very sad for our church because it means that they have moved to Plymouth. But Lori and Jeff and Alicia, if you would come on up, we just want to pray for you to send you on your way. I was really encouraged at the end of the mission trip uh, this past week to have Lori ask, is it okay if we still come on the mission trip even if we live in Plymouth? And I was like, absolutely.
announcements for you this morning. As it turns out, in no particular order. In about a month, we will be in the middle of Kids Camp Week, the first vacation Bible school this church has done in a generation. I am so excited. I ask you to please lend it your prayer support. We're thankful for the people that God will be inviting. We're inviting, but God's going to complete that invitation. So just continue to pray for that, and we celebrate the potential for that. Um, the teachers are in place. The, so many things are in place, and now we just need the kids to come. We are looking to connect with families who do not have a connection to a church, knowing that like 80% of the families in North Reading do not have a regular connection to church. So those are our target families. Invite those people you know, but talk to God about it, and let's get that prayer engine absolutely fired up. Another thing we're working on this summer is um, soliciting ads for our free-for-all breakfast. There is a sheet at the back of the room when you first come in. If you have a local business uh, relationship, a uh, place that you're always spending money, take that uh, ad solicitation in there and tell them, for $200, you can help support our free community breakfast and we'll put your business card on our placement. It's an easy ask. It's a great way to tell people what this church does. So even if they say, I can't do it, one more person knows about the breakfast and you can invite them to come. So please take one of those sheets at the back of the room um, and invite someone to join with us. This Tuesday night at 5 o'clock is the first of four bar Tuesday night barbecues we're doing during the summer. We know a lot of people are busy on the weekends or off on the boat or up at the lake, whatever they're doing. Uh, a lot of Alder State people. So we're having a Tuesday night service. It's informal, it's burgers, we're grilling. We're going to do a little music, we're going to do some prayer, and we'll do communion at the end. So it's a way for us to stay connected with our Christian community if we're away on the weekends. It's also a wonderful chance to invite a friend to experience the Aldersgate community. For this Tuesday night barbecue, um, I'm looking for someone who would like to grill burgers. And so you will be a blessing to me if uh, you come to me after church and say, sure, I will help out, I will grill. Tuesday night at 5, it'll be about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, something like that. So come get dinner and invite a friend. And on August 8th, which is a Wednesday, there is a fundraiser for uh, a homeless shelter in Boston. I forget the name of it right off the top of my head. St. Francis House in Boston. It is called a Shoes Cruise. And so if you bring a pair of shoes with you and pay an entry fee, you can go uh, sail around Boston, Boston Harbor and have lots of good food and drink. There's groups in the church going. Uh, if you would like to go Wednesday, August 8th, uh, please talk to me or to Bobby uh, Pierce and let us know and we'll get that group together. Uh, to go again this year. I want to give a special thanks uh, to my mother for Sally Meredith uh, playing the piano today while Daniel Schoenbarger is in the Filthy. Next Sunday, uh, we have our former church musician, Kayo Kam Kamau, uh, here with us and his family. We haven't seen him for about two and a half years. And so I just texted him. I said, can you come while Daniel's away? We're going to make you pay him. Um, <laughs> could you come? And he said, yeah, so please come next week and see Kyle. And if you've never met him, he's delightful and a wonderful musician. So we'll be glad to have him here <laughs> next week. Next week also, the sermon series, uh, The Gospel and the Movies, continues. The movie is The Princess Bride. So if you want to dust up on your movie watching this week, take a look at that. And I will be finding the gospel message within that movie for the sermon time next Sunday morning. Inconceivable. That's right. I think that word does not mean what you think it means. We can just quote it, actually, because I'm listening. That's right. Uh, the sign-up sheets out in the foyer on the clipboards are very wide open to sign up to read the scripture, to act light, to bring a coffee hour, or to greet. Will you please stop by and sign up for one of those duties as you walk out today? And finally, uh, the coffee hour today we were too early in the season to bring back blueberries from Maine. Um, but we brought back another real treat from Maine, which is Pig's Fly Bread. Pig's Fly Bakery is in Freeport. And they make exquisite, amazing, like $7 loaves of bread. So we spent a lot of money. And we got like four loaves of bread. And they are beautiful. You do not want to miss this bread. So go over and check it out. And thanks to uh, Sally and Bob Mary for picking those up in Freeport on the way home yesterday. Each week, we like to celebrate and thank the volunteers who help out around the church. Um, we have so many this week, it is crazy. That's because we've been so busy helping. 
right? Um, so uh, a special thanks, probably should have been on the prayer sheet, I think, but for David Granger, uh, who is the leader of the main, Downey's main mission, um, I'm going to be sending him a note this week, and I'll let him know that we thank him especially for his leadership. Also, uh, Jan Wise would like to thank George Schofield for heading up the painting crew from the International Family Church, and to thank Kathy McNally for her leadership and generosity for repainting of Classroom One. Everyone needs to visit Classroom One before we leave. So to George and to Kathy. Okay, don't touch the filing cabinets, they're wet. Okay, but they've been painted. They're all the same color. It's beautiful. Follow the paint fumes down to the end of the hall. <laughs> Kathy came in early because she had to touch some stuff up. I love it. Um, and then again, if, if you are one of the many people who help to support our main mission trip through your prayers and through your donations for materials fees, we appreciate you so much. Our fundraising hit it out of the park. It was beyond our goal, and, and we're just thrilled about that. So thank you. All right. I think Rachel. Yes. Oh, and then George. Yes, please. Nice and loud. On um, your way out, I'd like you to sign this piece of paper. I'll fill in the amount later. Um, but <laughs> well, actually, what it's for is for a thank you letter for the people who came from the uh, International Family Church to uh, paint for us yesterday. I would encourage you to take a look at the amount they did. <coughs> Entire wall off to the left of the sanctuary, all the way down to classroom one, around the corner by the gas tank, and to the corner where classroom two begins. Uh, eight people did that in four and a half hours. These are painting animals. <laughs> I need to send them a thank you letter, and I'd like the signature to the folks that are in attendance that we will include with the letter. Thank you for coordinating that, George. All right. Please stand for the benediction. May the God who has given us all gifts and talents and call us into this body of Christ be with us until we meet again in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.